Hello folks, this is David Krug again. I'm happy to create this video for you. And the subject that I want to talk about in today's video is in regards to solvency ratios. And what do solvency ratios measure? Solvency ratios measure a company's ability to pay its debts in the short term. And for purposes of this discussion, let's say that the short term is within the next 12 months. So let's take a look at what solvency ratios we're going to discuss today. Uh, I want to discuss two solvency ratios. I want to discuss the current ratio. And I want to discuss the acid test ratio. Okay, so let's go ahead and define those. The current ratio is defined as current assets divided by current liabilities. And the acid test ratio is defined as what we call quick assets divided by once again current liabilities. Now we need to define some terms here don't we? What do we mean first of all by the the uh, denominator here? Well current liabilities are any liabilities for our purposes that are due within uh, the next 12 months. All right. Uh, current assets. Current assets are those assets that we feel will be used up or consumed within the next 12 months. And current assets generally include um, cash, uh, short-term investments, accounts receivable, inventories, and usually there's some prepaid assets in there as well, such as prepaid rent or prepaid insurance. Okay, So the current ratio is computed by taking this total of current assets divided by current liabilities. And both of those subtotals are readily available on almost any financial statement you'll ever look at. That's why the current ratio is so popular. Let's take a look now at the acid test ratio. The acid test ratio has the same denominator as the current ratio, but we only include in the numerator what we call quick assets. Well, what are quick assets? Well, quick assets are those current assets that are very close to becoming cash. We call that liquidity. The more liquid an asset is, the quicker it can be converted to cash. So the acid test ratio, um, it abides by the philosophy and the notion that, well, inventory is not as close to becoming cash as, say, accounts receivable or short-term investments are certainly not cash. So the only thing that it wants to include are quick assets. And in this case, quick assets would be these three items, cash, short-term investments, and accounts receivable. And that is how you compute the acid test ratio. Now, with both of these ratios, you would prefer the assets on the numerator to be higher than the liabilities on the denominator. So both of these ratios, you would prefer to trend upward over time. Or said another way, all things being equal and within reason, we want these two ratios to be high. What I'd like to do now is um, take a look at some numbers and let's do a real life example. And we'll include these the way we calculate these up there at top. So let's bring in some numbers now and we can do some quick calculations of the current ratio and acid test ratio. Okay, let's take a look at that data and let's say the data on the left is for company A and the data on the right is for company B. Um, Let's first compute the current ratio. 
current ratio, as we can see on the top left, is computed by taking current assets divided by current liabilities. If we do that, we take 105 divided by 75, and we get a current ratio of 1.40 for company A. If we take current assets for company B of 120,000 divided by 100,000, we get a current ratio at that point in time of 1.20 for company B. So, who has the higher current ratio? Well, company A does. We want the current ratio to be high within reason. So, company A wins, don't they? Or said a better way, if we use the current ratio as a measure of solvency, company A is better able to pay off its short-term debts. Now let's figure out the acid test ratio. The acid test ratio is only going to include in the numerator what we call those quick assets. Well, in this case, the only quick assets there are are these, cash and accounts receivable. This, these companies don't have any short-term investments. So to compute the acid test ratio, we would take 20,000 divided by 75,000, and we would get 0 0.27 for company A. For company B, we would take 80,000, these two assets, divided by 100,000, and we would get 0 0.80. Now, who has the highest acid test ratio? Well, company B wins. Or said another way, if we use the acid test ratio as a means to compute solvency for a company, company B has a better ability to pay its short-term debts. So, now this is a bit of a contrived example. Um, I'll give you that. But what I wanted to show is why I believe the acid test ratio is superior. Because company A had a high current ratio, but a lot of its current assets were inventory. And that could very well be dead inventory, which is inventory that there's not a high customer demand for anymore, like iPhone 3s or VHS players or something like that. All right, what I want to do right now in the time left is I want to talk on a subject that I don't believe that a lot of accounting books uh, talk on, at least at the level that I wish they would, and that is interpretation of these videos. So let's go ahead and move this up, and let's talk a little bit about interpretation. All right, let's say a company has kept track of its current ratio and acid test ratio over the last five years, and they've done it on a monthly basis. So that would be 5 times 12, 60 data points. Let's say the current ratio is trending downward. And let's say the acid test ratio is following suit. So this is definitely a situation that would be of concern to the manager, right? This is clearly a negative trend. However, many textbooks that you look at, they're only going to have you compute and interpret two data points, and that will be the current year and the prior year. So what you're doing is you have two data points and they want you to interpret that. Well, two data points do not the trend make, and it's very hard to spot a trend if you're only looking at two data points. For example, let's just say you're looking at a very small amount of data, just what's in between those two red lines. Can you really see any trend there? Not really. What if you're looking right there between those two red lines? Can you see a trend? Not really. Now obviously, if you're looking at the entire amount of data, you're going to see a clear downward trend, which could, should be of great concern to us as the manager. Uh, it's kind of like if I compare my son's kindergarten to his first grade school picture. I don't see much change. If I compare 8th grade to ninth grade school pictures, not much change. But if I compare the kindergarten picture to his senior picture, that boy has grown up, hasn't he? So please be very, very um, careful and don't make assumptions based on a small amount of data. As we wrap up, I know we've really just touched upon financial analysis and its interpretation, but um, this all goes to the area of critical analysis, which I am big on. And um, 
Even the most beginning accounting student can start to analyze financial statements if they understand these concepts. So I encourage you to delve into that as you can.